Arizona, please, I'm on you. Get Arizona. Arizona. Oh, fair and set. Back up, back up, back up. We got it. We won. No, 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 no. Back up, back up, before we. Oh, I was good. That's good. I, we can auto with him. We can oh, auto. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Get the mid tower. Get the mid tower. Hello everyone and welcome to my guide on how to play Thanatos in Season 7 of Smite. For me, right now, Thanatos is probably one of the most fun assassins to play. Once you learn his kit and create your own build or just follow the right build, he is arguably one of the strongest gods in Smite in both damage and sustain. So to start off, I'll be dividing this guide into several sections. The first part will be early versus late game god and I'll be explaining the difference. Thanat and then the second part will be Thanatos' abilities in depth and when to use them along with some combos. The third part will be builds and the fourth will be the conclusion and wrapping it all together. Alright, so let me start off by explaining the difference between an early and a late game god. Essentially, early game gods are defined by their ability to inherently out damage other gods in the early game. This leads to a significant advantage at levels 1 through 5 and can snowball you to victory if you play your cards right. The opposite is true for late game gods. For example, Kali is considered a late game god because of the relatively weak damage of her kit and auto attacks in the early game. If you play Kali over aggressively in the early game, you may find yourself not being able to box other, stronger early game gods. When it comes to Thanatos, he's considered one of the most powerful early game gods, and although this is largely dependent on your ability to land your scythe, with some practice, it becomes second nature. Because Thanatos is an early game god, it's a smart choice to try to be aggressive with him in the early game, since you know you have the advantage. However, this doesn't mean you tower dive at level 1 and your excuse is, but I'm Thanatos, please don't do this to your team, uh, they'll hate you. <laughs> so, what I want to people to take away from this section is that Smite, just like any other competitive game, isn't just about knowing how strong your character is, it's also about knowing how strong they are relative to other characters and when you should take advantage of that fact. In the case of Thanatos, his strong early game presence, more often than not, is a huge opportunity to get ahead and start off the game strong. So this is a nice segue into explaining Thanatos' abilities so that you can understand exactly why he's so powerful early game. I'm also going to be sharing some combo moves so that you guys can get the most out of your abilities. So for Thanatos' passive, it's called Harvester of Souls. This is probably one of the strongest passives in Smite. Let me explain why. If Thanatos deals the killing blow to an enemy god, he will gain 20% of that target's max HP. He also gets this buff for minions, but it's less at 10% of the minion's max HP. This provides huge sustain for Thanatos during both team fights as well as while he is clearing the jungle. The most insane part about this passive is that when you kill an enemy god, all of your spell spells cooldowns are reduced by 5 seconds. Combined with minimal items and cooldown reductions such as Jodin's Wrath, this allows for an almost instant scythe after killing an enemy. In addition to the heal and cooldown reduction for every kill, any time enemy gods are within Thanatos' ultimates like execute threshold, which ranges from 24 to 40% of their life, essentially, if you don't know what that means, essentially, when enemy gods are in low health, these gods will be revealed on the map with a flashing red skull as seen here. This allows you to find low health enemies easily, and once you understand Thanatos' ultimate, you'll know why this is so helpful. However, the trade-off for all of the benefits of this passive is that all of Thanatos' abilities cost health to use. 5% for the, the abilities 1 through 3, and 10% of your health for, for your ultimate. So missing your abilities or needlessly spamming them might cost you your life. Haha. Uh -huh. uh, okay, that was a bad pun. Anyways, his first ability is Death Scythe. So Thanatos' first ability is one of, if not his most important. Death Scythe allows you to throw your scythe in a linear direction. It deals damage as well as an additional 10% of the target's maximum HP and heals you for 75% of the damage dealt. An important aspect of this move is that it also slows enemies by 20% for 3 seconds. This ability has various uses. If you want to finish off an enemy at a distance, make sure to land your scythe. If you want to hit an enemy and slow them down so you can chase them, make sure you land your scythe. If you're super low on health and need some healing, make sure you land that damn scythe. Starting to see a pattern here? 
So the trade-off for such a great ability is that it's fairly difficult to actually land that scythe because it has a very narrow line of sight. This is especially tough when the enemy player is actually decent at evading or juking. However, until you get used to throwing it at a distance, it's best to use a scythe when you're up close and personal with an enemy god to guarantee that it hits. Without landing this first ability, your early game presence drops dramatically. There are many other uses and combos with the scythe. For example, if you see someone sitting around 50% HP, when you land your scythe, this will most likely in instantly enter them into execute threshold and you'll be able to kill them easily with your ultimate. I'll explain this more when we discuss the ultimate ability. Alright, so for Thanatos' second ability, it's called Scent of Death. His second ability is a self-buff. For 6 seconds, Thanatos gains movement speed as well as penetration and immunity to slows. When moving toward an enemy god who is within execute threshold, basically when they're low health, your movement speed doubles. This ability is actually insane and personifies what it means to be the god of death. You become stronger and faster as you pursue gods with low health. This can increase up to 60% movement speed at end game. Essentially, this is what grants Thanatos the ability to chase his enemies and why it's so hard to get away from him. The opposite is also true. You'll often see Thanatos players cast their two in order to escape as they zoom away from you. The increased penetration also allows you to effectively damage enemy warriors or guardians. This ability has great synergy with your passive, which reveals all exec executable enemy gods. Thus, you have not only vision of easy prey, but also insane movement speed as you seek them out. Thanatos' third ability is called Soul Reap. It, it's a wide arcing swing of his scythe, as well as a very useful one second silence. This silence is useful for stopping long drawn out attack chains of enemy gods such as Nike's one or Bologna's hammer. Also, enemy mages often have escapes. Think of Scylla, Raijin, etc. But if you catch them unexpectedly with a silence, followed by a scythe and an auto attack, it may secure an easy kill. In addition to this, his three is able to hit multiple targets. This is useful for clearing jungle camps as well as silencing multiple enemy gods at once if you have the opportunity. One aspect of this ability that isn't mentioned is that it doesn't always land properly depending on the direction you're facing when the swing occurs. For example, you can see here that when Thanatos lifts the scythe high up in the air and I am clearly facing the enemy, but when you, but because you rotate your character during the swing, you may end up missing the enemy even though it appeared that you hit him or that you were about to hit him. It's important to continue to face the enemy throughout the duration of his third ability to make sure you hit them. So, Thanatos' ultimate, Hovering Death. Thanatos' ultimate ability allows him to fly in the air at 150% bonus movement speed for up to 5 seconds and instantly execute enemy gods who are below a certain health threshold by landing on them. This threshold increases as you progress throughout the game from 24% to 40%. In other words, it will become easier to instantly kill enemy gods as the game progresses. You just need to get them below the threshold. If the enemy is not below the health threshold, they will otherwise be damaged and stunned for a duration of one second. This ability is also one of Thanatos' most powerful, and generally has three main uses. The first is obvious, execute enemy gods with low health. The second use is to engage an unsuspecting enemy god with a stun followed by your kit. Most people think they're safe if they aren't in the executable health threshold, but you're going to prove they're not. The third use is to escape if you find yourself surrounded and in trouble. Alright, so now I'm just going to provide some commentary on the opening clip that I showed earlier. Alright, so I see Zanami's there. I pop my two to get to her quick. I throw the sights. She's already at half health there. That happened real quick, so it's kind of hard to see. But, let me, let me talk you through it. So I pop the two to get closer to her. Hit her with a scythe. Hit her with an auto. She's already half health, so she's running away. Um, I see Baron's here. I kind of wait for my support to catch up, even though he's real low health. He goes in. Baron's full health. I silence him. Hit him with a scythe right here. Then we go for the Izanami. I beads a little late, but it ends up happening. I silence her. Or I hit her with the thir third ability and an auto and she's dead. And as you can see, my abilities right here all just got off cooldown. I had five seconds on the scythe here, four seconds. And as soon as I kill her, boom, it's up. Right there. And my two. 
both instantly back. And I pop my two so I can get the increased penetration so we can kill this Bacchus. And as you can see throughout this whole clip, you can see how my health is just, you know, I'm starting at full health, I'm at half health, and I get to full health, and that's all because of the scythe. The scythe is saving me every single time, so you have to land the scythe and getting a kill with the passive. So, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So you just have to be able to land your scythe to survive. You want to use that too to catch up to enemies, get your increased penetration. You can use the silence uh, whenever you can as well. Alright, so I realized in the last clip I didn't show off the ultimate ability. I also realized that these clicks are kind of fucking annoying. So, yeah, my bad. I'm not really sure how to fix that. Um, but I noticed that this Kali is in right lane, so I'm, I alt immediately. And right here, you land. And there you go, stun, and just boom. So essentially, this, this stun and auto attack. And if they don't have bees, they don't see it coming, it's essentially a free kill. Um, because as soon as you land, you can get an auto in, and then you, you can either throw the scythe right away or get an auto in. It doesn't really matter, because it's just gonna, boom, 520 plus 4, 17, oh my god, it's just, it's nuts. She's basically dead at this point, I mean, what can she really do? Um, I don't think, like, the game even gave her enough time to use her ult, even if she could have. Um, but then I just throw the scythe and, yeah. Yeah. Our final discussion will be on builds. I would like to start off with a disclaimer that there is no perfect build for all situations, nor item or items that should always be built, because items can and should be situational in order to take advantage of the given enemy god team composition. With that being said, I do believe optimal builds allow synergy between the items themselves as well as that particular god's unique abilities. I'm going to begin by quickly taking a look at my starter items for Conquest. This includes Assassin's Blessing, Mace, Hand of the Gods, and a single health potion. You'll be using the Hand of the Gods to clear your solos blue quicker and reach the mid camps quicker as well. This all equates to 1500 gold, so you should be able to buy it. Importantly, the next item you build is Warrior Tabby or your Boots and not Jotun's Rat so that you have the early game advantage of speed. Next, item, Warrior Tabby. More power equals more damage. It's as simple as that. However, I have seen pro players recommend that junglers start off with Teleria Boots as well in order to clear the jungle faster. For me, I would rather make Thanatos an even stronger early game god by going with Warrior Tabby. After all, the enemy jungler can't outfarm you if they're dead. The next item will be Jotun's Wrath. Power, penetration, and cooldown reduction. It's a staple of many builds, and I don't see how you can go wrong by building Jotun's Wrath. The third item will be Hydra's Lament. After landing your scythe, ultimate, or your thir third ability, your next basic attack will deal 40% more damage. This will aid in your ability to quickly burst enemy gods down and make their HP reach executable threshold. Also, more power and cooldown reduction is a good thing. The next item will be either Bloodforge, Crusher, or Brawler's Beatstick. If you find yourself needing to survive and in hectic team fights, I would go with Bloodforge. The shield and movement speed it gives per kill and given how well it synergizes with our passive, makes us nearly untouchable as long as we secure the kill. Crusher is a slightly cheaper item that provides attack speed and more penetration if you find yourself facing more tanky gods. If the enemy team has Aphrodite, Hercules, Hell, or a hunter who is building lifesteal, or any healer, this is where I often choose to build brawlers, but honestly, Bloodforge just works so well with Thanatos' kit that I will probably end up buying it eventually anyways. The next item is Erendite. This is a relatively new item to smite that some people may not know about yet. I'll explain what it does here. Erendite's base stats include 75 power and 10% cooldown reduction. Its passive bonus is the following. 
When your ultimate has finished casting, reveal all enemy gods within 120 units for 8 seconds. While moving towards these revealed enemies, gain 30% movement speed. When first striking a revealed target, they take an additional 40 plus 30% of your physical power. This can only occur once every 45 seconds. The movement speed that Erendyke grants has great synergy with our Scent of Death, our second ability, and the fact that we already have Hydra's Lament will make our first strike after our ultimate ability insanely powerful. Our next item will be Heartseeker. Since we are building an essentially all power build, we will benefit the most from Heartseeker's passive, which will make our abilities deal 6% of enemy's god enemy god's health damage when we reach 400 power. This synergizes well with Thanatos' Scythe, which already takes away 10% of the enemy god's life pool. At endgame, you can sell Warrior Tabi for the movement speed potion and buy what you believe will be best for the given situation. This may include a Magi's Blessing if the enemy team comp contains a lot of CC and is giving you trouble, or you can double down on power, or you can buy a movement speed item, it's up to you, but honestly at this point, you can't really go wrong. That concludes my guide on how to play Thanatos for Season 7 of Smite. Please let me know what god you want me to cover next. Most of my time on Smite has been spent playing the jungle role, mid, or ADC. Some of my favorite gods are Arachne, Daji, Scylla, Bologna, and Artemis. Some of you may have noticed that my voice sounds a bit different than my last video. That's because I bought a new mic. My last mic made me sound like Darth Vader underwater, so I hope this is more pleasant to the ears. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video or learned something from it. I spent more time trying to organize this video compared to my other videos. Let me know if you guys enjoy this style more than the sporadic off-script nature of my others. If you did like the video, consider hitting the like button, subscribing if you want to see more content. I appreciate all the new subscribers I've been receiving, and thank you, and have fun playing 